Well, let somebody shout hallelujah. For those of you who were here yesterday for the Holy Communion, we ended by saying that our God is a God of suddenly. I want you to lift your voice to the Almighty God and say, Father, tonight, let my miracles come suddenly. Open your mouth and, and cry unto him. Let my miracles come suddenly tonight. Thank you, Father. Suddenly tonight, let my miracles begin. Thank you. Amen. I am serving the God of miracles. I know, yes, I know, I'm serving a God of miracles. I know, yes, I know, hallelujah, I'm serving God of miracles. Thank you, Father. A God of wonders, I know. Yes, I know. I'm serving a God of wonders, I know. Yes, I know. Hallelujah. I'm serving. Father and God, the Almighty God, the one who does wonders, the one who himself is wonderful, the one who reigns supreme, the one who is completely unlimited. Glory be to your holy name. Thank you for January. Thank you for February. Thank you for March. Thank you for April. Thank you for May. Now, thank you for June. Father, accept our worship in Jesus' name. Tonight, God of wonders, 
in the lives of all your children, let there be wonders. Perform wonders suddenly. Father, long before I finish preaching, let there be hundreds and thousands of wonders here tonight. Don't let any of us live here tonight without tasting your wonders. And Lord God Almighty, I'm committing particularly into your hands the re redeemed men's fellowship. All our men, young and old, in this mission, Father, bless them. Prosper them. Support them. Everything they need to be men, real men, Father, give unto them. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Well, let someone shout hallelujah. And then we can all be seated as we ask only those born in the month of June to stand. If you are born in June, let me hear you shout hallelujah. Father, I'm committing to your hands your children born in the month of June. June is the sixth month of the year. And six is five plus one. And so, Lord God Almighty, I'm praying for this, your children, that will give them abundant grace. That all their blessings will be in abundance. that their blessings will be more, more than, than sufficient. sufficient. Yeah. That their miracles will be in abundance. Yeah. Give them a new beginning yeah. of joy, yeah. of success, yeah. of overflowing anointing, yeah. of grace to serve you. Yeah. Let it be well with them yeah. and let them serve you to the end. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Well, let the children of June shout a big June hallelujah. And then you may please be seated. God bless you. Well, by the grace of God, next month, our theme will be the all-sufficient God. We want to consider the wonders of his sufficiency. It is also the week, that week is a week when all disciples will be having their convention. And so all disciples, past and present, we are supposed to be here from the very first day of the week and come have a wonderful time in the presence of God. The convention then will round up during the Holy Ghost service. Now, my children had come again. Yeah. And they are getting better and better and better. Let's give the Lord a big round of applause for these children. You know, I told you a time will come when 
my children will do all the preaching and I will just come at the end and just say, God bless you all and you will go home fully satisfied. We are getting very close to that period. And uh, by the time we get sufficiently uh, equipped by these young ones, and then I will have freedom to travel a little more. Because wherever I go now, all over the world, I had to hurry back for the Holy Ghost night. But when we have enough of these young ones to deal with the topic, I can, I can queue in from Australia, from New Zealand, from Japan, from wherever I may be in the world. As soon as they finish, they will just bring me in by technology. And I'm just say, God bless you, my children. And I'm sure you'll be blessed. Wonderful people. I think we should give all of them a big round of applause. They all did very well. Zone one, the choir was good. They sang in a language that I wasn't even sure it was Yoruba. I had to listen very carefully before because I thought it was singing in song, uh, in tongues. But then I began to hear one or two words that I recognized. But they did a very good job, very good job. Let's give the Lord a big round of applause for the choir. And then the preacher came. And he said so many things. One of the things he said that I've never heard before is that wonders is the elder brother of science. Did you hear that one? Come on, give the Lord a big round of applause. I mean, that is revelation. That's revelation. And then, of course, he went ahead and gave you uh, a very beautiful sermon on how to know the God of wonders. And then came zone two. And they practiced one of the things that zone one said. You know, zone one, the man who spoke in zone one said that when he was talking about various keys, he said dance can be a key. Did, did you hear that one? And then when zone two came, my oh my, the choir danced. <laughs> they presented praise in dance form. That was beautiful. And then the preacher came and did a thorough Bible study. He wasn't preaching, he, he was doing a Bible study. Uh, he, he said two things that I feel you should pay attention to. He said God doesn't know how to do small things. You know, I thought about that. And the con my own conclusion from that is that many of us have not received miracles from God because we have been asking Him for small things. You see, the, the, the statement of that young man reminded me of an uncle of mine, the late Uncle Chief Fajem Roku, one of the wealthiest men Nigeria ever produced. He was my uncle. 
You go to him and say, Uncle, please give me a thousand naira. In those days, naira was strong. Uncle will say, I don't have. Ah, how can you say you don't have? You go to him, Uncle, give me 10,000 naira. You say, I don't have. But when you go to him and say, Uncle, I need a hundred thousand naira, urgently say, Hey, now you are talking. How, how, how can you be asking me for a thousand naira? Don't you know who I am? Now, this young man just pointed us out, pointed our God to us. A God who does not like to do small things. Will somebody lift up your voice to him and say, God, tonight, do something great in my life. Amen. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. And then he added that God has not stopped doing wonders. So if he has done wonders in the past, it means he's still doing wonders now. He hasn't retired. That's very, very good revelation. I think we should give the Lord a big round of applause for the young man. Let me jump zone three first and go to zone four. And we'll come back to zone three. Zone four, the choir, very good. Very good. They did, they did, they did a great job. And then the preacher also came and did a Bible study. Passage upon passage upon passage, and he talked to us about how God can, puff, can bypass man when he wants to perform wonders. When I heard that one, I wanted to pray. I would have shouted loud. But we can do the praying together. I said, Father, Father, if I had been looking to any man for help, tonight, bypass the fellow and bring my miracle to me straight away. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. You see, because he, he reminded me. You see, when some people say I tell stories, I don't tell stories, I give testimonies. He reminded me of the story of a woman who had been coming to a pastor. Pastor, pray for me. I want to be fruitful. Pastor, pray for me. And then one day the pastor said, ah, everybody had prayed for, had become pregnant. What's your own case? And the woman told the pastor, ah, when I was in school, I, I made a mistake, became pregnant, and uh, tried to commit abortion. Everything went wrong. By the time they took me to the hospital, the doctors had to remove my womb. So the pastor said, hey, you mean you have no womb? She said, no, sir, I have no. And you're asking me to pray for you. <laughs> so from that day onward, whenever the pastor saw her coming, the pastor would dodge. And then one day the woman saw the pastor dodging. So she turned her attention to God. Father, 
without a pastor perform a miracle. That night, she slept and had a dream. You've, some of you have had the testimony before. In the dream, she was standing naked and a huge man came through the door holding the skin of an animal towards her. She was so frightened, she couldn't move from the spot. The man came to her, wrapped the skin of the animal around her waist and disappeared. She woke up from the dream and found that she had started menstruating. By the time she was sharing her testimony, she had had babies. God bypassed the pastor. Lift your voice to the Almighty God and say, Father, everyone you need to bypass to give me my miracle. Just bypass them, bypass them. Just bypass them. Bypass them, Lord. Bypass them. Uh, if you have to bypass the general overseer to give me my miracle, bypass him, Lord. Bypass everybody you need to bypass. Just give me my miracle direct. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Uh -huh. Then we came to zone three. <laughs> as soon as I saw him coming to the pulpit, the Spirit of God seemed to say to me, <laughs> Great miracles come in small parcels. <laughs> I'm telling you that was explosive. That was explosive. I mean, if we had given him another one hour, she would have gone up. Uh, she was going so fast, I couldn't catch up. So I'm going to get the tape. But one of the things that he said, that I, that I found so encouraging, is that before your problem started, God has provided a solution. Did you hear that one? Before the problem started, God has already provided what? A solution. I want you to cry to God and say, Father, the solution to my problem revealed to me tonight. Uh, because I know you have, you have already provided the solution. Just reveal it to me tonight. Reveal it to me tonight. Father, reveal it to me tonight. Thank you, Father. Reveal it to me tonight. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And then came the representative of the pastor's seed family. Ah. I find it a bit difficult to comment tonight because of who he is. Win-win situation. Every businessman looks for a deal that will be a win-win 
situation. And this young man has told us that yes, you might have two sides to a coin. Head, you win. And if you know what to do, tail, you can win also. Hmm. That's deep. That's really deep. God is love. You are on the side of love. You have won. Because if because God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son. You are on the love side of God. The one who has given you his only begotten son, what else will he not give you? You're on the side of love, you are more than a conqueror. You're on the side of the Lord, of love. If God is on your side, who can be against you? And then he said, uh, there is a consuming fire side of God, and the two can dwell together. And they went and revealed some secrets that some of you never knew. Uh, <laughs> and uh, you only know the lamb side of Pastor Adeboe. Uh, you have never seen the lion side. Uh, I pray you won't see the lion side. <laughs> Everybody knows I love my children very dearly. And there's some of you believe that if you love your children, you should handle them with uh, gloved hands. <laughs> my children know that uh, when they don't do what I tell them, fire falls. And it won't be Holy Ghost fire. Uh, <laughs> Glory be to God. And that should be a lesson to those of you who are treating your children as if they are gods. The word of God is clear. Train up a child in the way he should go. So that when he grows up, he won't be able to depart from it. Well, I thank God for exposing a little bit of my hidden side. <laughs> so those of you who want to get close to me, you have to pray again now before you do so. But he mentions something that the fire side of God is for purification. To those who are willing if you want to serve him, you want to obey him, and you don't have to fear anything. It will make you sharper, purer. I know there are many, many men of God who talk only about the love of God, and they never mention to you the consuming side, the consuming fire side of God. I'm sorry to say those people don't love you. Because God is not a Father Christmas. God is the Almighty. And you must not mess around with Him. And the Bible made it abundantly clear. Whomsoever the Father loves, what does the Father do? Ah. The more I love you, the tougher I will be with you. The reason is simple. I want all my children to be greater than I. So all of you are my children. You are going to be greater than I. That means you are going to fast more than I. You didn't say amen now. <laughs> you have to pray more than I. You have to walk in the night when others are sleeping, praying. But God will make you greater than I. 
So he says, if you are on this love side of God, you can be a winner. If you don't hate holiness, if you love holiness, you can be on the consuming fire side of God and be a winner. So you have a win-win situation. And then he plugged in something. He said that it's a third side of God. The side called mercy. Ah, that's good. That's good. See, when he said that, he reminded me of something that I've shared with some of you before. There are three ways of doing things. The right way, the wrong way, and God's way. When God is doing things his own way, <laughs> out of mercy, he can give you something you don't deserve. The Bible says, it is not of him that runneth, nor of him that willeth, but of God that showeth mercy. He had asked you to cry to God for mercy. But I'm going to ask you to cry to him one more time. And I will explain. Just a little bit further. You know, towards the end of last year, I called a solemn assembly. And I asked us to cry to God for mercy for Nigeria. How many of you remember? We cry to God for mercy. Thank God nobody asked me. Why? Because I would not have told you. Today, we see the answer to that prayer. If God had not shown us mercy, by now, we will be on the brink of a civil war. The God answers prayers. We are still able to move about freely in peace. We are not fully out of the wood yet. That's why you are going to pray this prayer, and you are going to pray standing. You're going to cry to the Almighty God with all your strength and say, Father, have mercy on me. Have mercy on my family. Have mercy on Nigeria. Have mercy on the whole world. And have mercy on your church. Open your mouth and cry to the Almighty God. Mercy, O oh Lord. Mercy, O oh Lord. Mercy, O oh Lord. Just have mercy. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on my family. Have mercy on Nigeria. Have mercy on the world. Have mercy on your church. Have mercy, O oh Lord. Have mercy, O oh Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Well, let me hear you shout a loud hallelujah. And then you may please be seated. Now, I just want to add a little bit to what my children have already done. My own text will be Proverbs chapter 9 verse 10. Proverbs 9 verse 10. 
The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the holy is understanding. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Now my children have defined understanding eloquently, theologically, grammatically, in, you know, if they've they, if they defined understanding. But I, I want to define understanding the way the market woman can understand. In the, in the simple way. You see, there is a link between knowledge, understanding, and wisdom in the passage I read to you. But you see, to understand someone is to know as much as possible how he thinks, how he acts, and how he reacts to certain situations. Now, uh, maybe a very good, a very simple illustration will clear the matter. Because if you understand someone, then you will behave in such a manner that that someone will be able to do for you whatever you want. If you understand somebody, you can get whatever you want from him or her. I've told a story before, something that happened in 1963. That was 20 years before I became born again, so you you will understand the kind of person I was then. A gay friend of mine came to visit from out of town. I won't tell you the state she came from. And I had prepared very hard. Prepared very good pandadia. Combination of crop soup, bush meat, etc., etc. When she arrived, we sat at the dining table. And then I opened the dishes. And she looked at everything pandered yam, okra soup, all kinds of uh, meat. And she said, you only prepare panadia? I said, yes. He said, ah, don't you have gari? I said, gari? <laughs> she said, yes. Ah. I, have, I said, I have gari. <laughs> and then she said, do you have tinko? Now, tinko, for those of you who listen abroad, is uh, dried uh, beef. I said, yes, I, I, I have. I... So I went, got Gary, got a bowl of ice water, and got a, a big chunk of tinko, and she was enjoying herself. Soaking Gary, I ate my pandred yam alone. But by the end of the meal, she was so satisfied. I got what I wanted. After that, any time she visited, I didn't bother preparing pandred yam. I got Gary, and I got Tinko because now. I understood her. 
Tonight, somebody will begin to understand God. So that from now on, whatever you want from him, you will get. Now, the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28, Isaiah 40, verse 28, it is... It's not easy to say you want to understand God. I mean, our understanding of God, at the very best, is going to be limited. However, the Word of God encourages us to want to understand Him. The Bible says, in Proverbs chapter 25, verse 2, Proverbs 25, verse 2, he said, It is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but it's the honor of kings to search out the matter. We are encouraged to do a research into this God so that we can understand Him. So we can know him more. Because when you know him, according to Daniel chapter 11 verse 32, Daniel 11 verse 32, when you know him, you'll be strong. And then you can do exploits. But we need to know straight away that his ways are not our ways. Neither his thoughts, our thoughts. Isaiah 55 from verse 7 to 9. Isaiah 55, 7 to 9. He does not think like we think. He does not behave the way you think he will behave. You expect him to come from the left, he will come from the right. If you think because he came from back, your back yesterday, that it will be your back that it will come next time. You make a mistake. Because Elijah was a hairy man, people respected him as a prophet. When they saw Elisha, that he was bald headed, they never thought this man can have any power. But that's the way, that's the first thing you need to know about God. He doesn't think the way you think. Naaman said in 2 Kings chapter 5, from verse 1 to 14, 2 Kings 5, 1 to 14, Naaman said, I thought the man of God would come out. Pray for me. Lay his hand on my uh, leprous section and then cleanse me. That's what he thought. But God came from another direction and told him, go and take your bath. Thank God he obeyed. And somebody here today, in a manner you are not expecting, my God will surprise you. Yeah. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts, not our thoughts. For example, the way we think as human beings is that if you want to increase in wealth, you must keep on accumulating. But that's not what he said. In his own case, he said in Proverbs chapter 11, verse 24, Proverbs 11, verse 24, he said, if you want to increase, you must scatter. He so said, the, the little you say you have, scatter it. We don't think that way. What we have, we want to hold. But you will discover, if you ask the elders, they will tell you that even the devil knew that trick. That if anybody has made a charm for wealth, the witch doctor will tell him when the money begins to come begin to scatter it 
if you swallow a charm to make money they expect that at least once a week you must throw a party it, the devil copied that from God there is he that scattereth and yet does what? increases and then there is he who decides no I'm going to keep the little I have and God says that little is going to diminish In Matthew chapter 13, from verse 3 to 9, Matthew 13, from verse 3 to 9, the, the Lord told us the story of the sower. He said the sower went to sow. Some of the seed, because he was just scattering the seed, some fell by the roadside, some fell uh, on stony ground, some fell among thorns, etc., etc. God wants you to scatter some of the scattering might not produce fruit but if you will land on good soil and the harvest from the good soil we take care of whatever fell on wrong soil because the bible made it clear in Hosea chapter 8 verse 7 Hosea 8 verse 7 he said when you sow wind you will reap while wind the harvest is always much much bigger than the sea sown the reason some of us are still where we are financially speaking is because we have not learned to scatter so you are learning you are understanding god now he expects you to scatter and then you will increase. In First Kings chapter 17, from verse 8 to 16, First Kings 17, from verse 8 to 16, a woman, a widow, said, I have only one meal left. The man of God said, Give it to me. Do my own first, and then see what will happen. It does not make sense that if you have only one meal, you should give it out. The woman, by faith, obeyed. And for years, she was supernaturally fed. May I prophesy to someone that spirit of stinginess, of miserliness, that have been hindering your prosperity, may it depart from you tonight. He says in his word, just to show you that his ways are not your ways, his thoughts are not your thoughts. He said, if you want to have dominion, then you must be under authority. Our own ways of thinking is that if you want to have authority, then you want to be above everybody. You don't want to be under anyone. But he says in his word, if you want to have authority, you must be under authority. Luke chapter 7, from verse 2 to 10. Luke 7. From verse 2 to 10, he tells us of a centurion who came to Jesus Christ and said, My servant is sick. And Jesus said, No problem, I come and heal. He said, No, no, sir, you don't have to come. Speak a word only, and my servant shall be made whole. He said, Because I also am a man under authority. I'm under the authority of Caesar. And because I'm under the authority of Caesar, that's why I have authority over some soldiers. I ask this one to come, he comes, this one to go, and he goes. And I know you, Jesus. You are under the authority of your Father in heaven. Command the sickness, the demon tormenting my servant to go. Don't say a word here. And the, the, the demon will let go. 
The Bible says Jesus marveled at his faith. I told the people, go home. By the time you get home, the problem will be solved. When I joined the Redeemed Christian Church of God, with all humility, I was the most educated. I was a lecturer in the university. My father in the Lord, God bless his memory forever. He didn't go to school, but he knew the Bible offered. And the Almighty God told me, with all your PhD, you are to be under the authority of this man. I thank God today that I surrendered, that I, happened, I agreed to be under his authority. It is because I was under the authority of that great man that today, when I command the demons, they obey. And I'm using that authority which I gained by being under authority to command that every demon that followed you here tonight will not go back with you. Now, why must you learn to be under authority to exercise dominion? Because your enemy does not fear you but they will fear the one backing you. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 19, from verse 11 to 17, Acts 19, from verse 11 to 17, the Bible says, when some people saw Paul casting out demons by sending his handkerchiefs, they said, ah, he was using the name of Jesus. Let's go and do the same thing. They saw a madman and said, in the name of Jesus that Paul preaches, get out of this man. The demon said, I know Jesus. I know Paul. Who are you? Who is the one backing you? And you know the rest of the story. The demon beat them, tore their clothes, and they ran. The, the demon was saying, the reason if Paul sent an archive where I will run, is not because of Paul, but because of the one under whose authority he's operating. The problem with many of us Christians is we are too independent. If you want to really understand God, God expects you to be under authority. Do I hear amen from someone? <laughs> now I want to go on a deeper note because I, I, my children have taken a lot of time. So I, I, and, uh, so I want to move on quickly. I want to go a, on a deeper note. God says, if you want to be victorious all the time, the thing you must do is that you must surrender. How can I surrender? I see be considered a winner. No, no, no. It depends on who you surrender to. It's not asking you to surrender to your enemy. He's asking you to surrender to him. James chapter 4, verse 7. James chapter 4, verse 7. He says, submit to God. Then you can resist the devil and he will flee from you. Submit. Submit your marriage to God. 
and he would deal with that strange woman submit your business to god and he will deal with the devourers submit your future to the lord and anyone that tries to mess around with your uh, future we have to fight the god who is behind you because it is written let god arise and his enemies will scatter the problem is that most of us are fighting our battles alone and if you are fighting your battles alone you are bound to lose you can't fight the devil alone the devil has been around for thousands of years before you were born. He has defeated some great men in the past. You don't believe me? Ask somebody like Samson. You don't believe me? Study the life of Moses very well. Um, there was a lecture I, I preached several years ago called the Joker Card. Ask the people who in the tape ministry maybe they find it for you the moment the devil discovered your weakness he can wait till the last moment before he will bring it out and defeat you but if you 100 percent submit to god you will resist the devil and the devil will flee for you There have been several situations in the past when we have prayed, we have fasted, we have quoted the Bible, we have done everything. Until one day God will simply minister to us and say, why don't you submit this problem to me? And you submit the problem to him, and you go to bed one night, by the time you wake up the following day, the problem is over. I pray for someone here tonight. Whatever problems you brought here, as you lay the problems at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ, by tomorrow the problems will be gone. My son was talking on a deeper dot. He says something about if you are on the love side of God, then you have won. The question is, how can I be on the love side of God? I have discovered that secret, but how do I access it? Knowing who God is, Romans chapter 8 verse 17. Romans 8 verse 17. He said, I love those who love me. That surprises you. How much love of God are you going to enjoy? It depends on how much love you are willing to show him. You know when he said, draw near to me and I will draw near to you? He says, you take the first step. Take one step towards me. And I will take a step towards you. But like I share with uh, some of my children in Israel, you take a step. How big will be your step be? How big your step is, is determined by how long your legs are. And so the step you take towards God is going to be pretty small. And then he takes a step towards you. <laughs> and how long are his legs? Extremely long. 
So his own step will be a mighty one. Take a little step towards him and see him in action. Take a little step of faith and see God move. When we talk about faith, which we discussed last night during the Holy Communion service, we find that many of us who claim to be men and women of faith, we might not even know what faith is. And so, even though I, I'm trying to hurry, but I, I, I think I should remind you of one or two cases of people who have taken a small step towards God. And God has taken a giant step towards them. I will tell you the story of a woman. She was barren. She heard that God had been using us, that we have special anointing in the area of uh, the barren becoming fruitful. So she heard that we were going to hold a program at Alagbadu. So she came there. She thought the program was going to be in the evening. Whereas it, I went there in the afternoon because I was visiting the churches in Lagos. By the time she arrived, she said, what about the crusade? They said, we'll have, we'll take place. And they told her, ah, the man of God had come and gone. Oh, she fell on the ground and began to roll and began to cry. So the people asked her, why are you crying? She said, I told God I'm not going to ask the man of God to pray for me. I just want to see him from a distance. He said, but now he has gone before I could arrive. So I know God doesn't want me to have children. Then somebody told her, we had the announcement that tomorrow is going to be a gege or somewhere. He said, you are sure they told her yes? You know the address? Somebody gave her the address. She was in the church very early in the morning. And there it was time for the program. And all pastors were dressed alike. I used to dress like our pastors then. So she didn't know who is who. So she asked somebody, who is he? general oversight among them and somebody told her is the one who will preach and so it was time to preach and I mounted the puppy talked the fellow talk, she talked the fellow next to her is that the man the fellow said yes he said ah, now I know I'm going to have my baby nine months later the baby has come now that's that's faith. She took a small step of faith and God took a giant step towards her. In the name that's above every other name, I am going to decree that because you came tonight, the Almighty God will move towards you. Let me take maybe two more points. One, with God, delay is not denial. Why? Well, it works according to a timetable. Somebody, one of my children, mentioned Ecclesiastes chapter 3 from verse 1 to 8. Ecclesiastes 3 from verse 1 to 8. But many a times we think it's late. One thing we need to understand about God is that God says in his word, Psalm 90 verse 4. Psalm 90 verse 4. He says, as far as God is concerned, a thousand years 
in his own sight. It's at times that just one day or a watch in the night, just like one hour. Now, when a thousand years is one hour, then how long is one minute? So many a times when you are expecting a miracle from God and it seems to be delaying, understand that what you are calling a long delay is a very short period of time with him. The beauty of it, however, is this. Psalm 46 verse 1. Psalm 46 verse 1 says, is the ever-present help in the time of trouble. So for those of you who feel you are suffering a delay, in the name that's above every other name, your help will come tonight. Oh, thank you, Father. The Lord said there is a genius in the house tonight. He said there is somebody here listening to me right now. One of the greatest discoveries in science is going to come through you. Thank you, Father. The Lord asked me to tell somebody, and I want to say amen to it before I tell you. He says, suddenly, the wind will begin to blow in your favor. Thank you, Father. I'll tell you a story very quickly. When I became general overseer in 1981, there were quite a few people in the church who thought that, uh, that the thing would, that my appointment was rigged. They thought, thought that uh, because the old man was in Lanet, that uh, I used my position as uh, a professor, I mean, a lecturer in mathematics to maneuver. But then God began to do something. Every month we have a seminar. And on the first day of the seminar, every month, a woman would deliver in a maternity center, and it would be a boy. First month, second month, third month. After some time, it became clear to even my enemies that this cannot be mathematically calculated, that this is the hand of God. The reason God asked me to tell you that story is that there is somebody here tonight. A miracle is coming your way. That even your enemies cannot deny. <laughs> oh, thank you, Father. Now this is mine too. So I'm saying yes to this one. Amen, Lord. Daddy says miracles are in categories. Regular miracles, special miracles, etc., etc. He said there's someone here tonight 
A miracle is coming your way that will shake the ground. If I don't preach anymore, if God is the one talking, that's good by me. The Lord asked me to tell someone, he said, your opponents are far, far too strong for you. He said, but my blood will speak for you. Now this one is for one young fellow. The Lord said there's one young fellow here tonight. He said it takes only one person to bring the name of a family to the limelight. He said you shall be that one. At least I can take one more. When, when we are trying to understand God, we need to know that God is sovereign. He does as He pleases. Psalm 115, verse 3. Our God is in the heavens. He does as He pleases. Psalm 115, verse 3. And so He reserves the right to change a prophecy to a decree. And I will explain that very, very briefly. A prophecy is when God says, I'm going to do the following. And he didn't put a time limit. I mean like in Genesis 12, from verse 1 to 3, Genesis 12, 1 to 3, he promised Abraham, oh, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make you great. I'll make your name great. You'll be a blessing, etc., etc. And through thy seed, the whole earth shall be blessed. But he didn't say when. So that was a prophecy. And so years passed, and nothing happened. We got to Genesis 15. God brought him up. Can you count the stars? He said, No, eh, so shall your seed be. Amen. Years pass. We got to Genesis 17. God said, Abraham, you, your wife is still going to have a son. In fact, we got to say, Abraham said, God, let's stop this joke. But then came Genesis 18 from verse 1 to 14. And God said, Nine months from now, your wife will carry a baby. This time, it wasn't a prophecy. It was a decree. Because the time for it to come to pass was limited. There are many of us who have been collecting prophecies. But in the name that's above every other name, tonight, God will turn your prophecies to a decree. One of my children ask you to pray a prayer or was it either he asked us to pray the prayer or he prayed it for us when he said many of you have been seeing signs that tonight you will receive a wonder so shall it be in Jesus name you see from the moment God speaks it's already done Anytime he made a promise, it is a settled matter. 
The Bible says in Psalm 33, verses 8 and 9, Psalm 33, verses 8 and 9, he said, let the whole earth fear him. Why? Because he spake and it is done. But many a times he didn't put a time limit. I am glad to tell some people that my daddy has put a time limit that this particular month of June 2023 will be a month of miracles for some people. Let me close with this. I haven't finished, but uh, in future, maybe God will bring us back to some of these things. Though God is the Almighty, and you will wonder, someone like him, what else can he need? You need to know something very, very significant about God. And that is that he loves celebrations. Oh, he loves celebrations. In Exodus 23, from verse 14 to 16, Exodus 23, from verse 14 to 16, he said at least three times a year all his children must come and celebrate three times he said there must be a feast of the unleavened bread there must be a feast of uh, harvest of first fruits he said there must be a feast of in gathering at the end of the year. So some of you may not fully understand a secret that you are getting now. That's why in the Redeemed Christian Church of God there are three big events. In March, special Holy Ghost service. In August, annual convention in December the Congress God loves celebrations and when you read John chapter 2 from verse 1 to 11 John 2 from verse 1 to 11 the Bible says the first miracle ever that Jesus performed was at a wedding Now that alone is good news for somebody. Because Jesus is going to be at your wedding this year. <laughs> but do you know what? His greatest celebration takes place in heaven every time a sinner gets born again. Luke chapter 15 verse 10. Luke 15 verse 10. says, every time a sinner is saved, there is joy in the presence of angels. Some people think that what that passage is saying is that when a sinner gets born again, the angels begin to dance. No. He didn't say there is joy among angels. He said there is joy in the presence of angels. Angels are watching. 
the one who is celebrating every time a soul is saved jesus christ dances he gets up from his seat and dances why because he is the redeemer he knew the price he paid for the salvation of soul and each time he saw that his labor had not been in vain he dances do you know any time somebody genuinely gives his life to jesus christ they make god happy they bring celebration to the heavens and because of somebody here tonight there's going to be celebration in heaven because of a sinner who came here tonight as a sinner but who is going to surrender his or her life to jesus christ there's going to be celebration in heaven that is why i always ask you to clap when souls are coming to be saved because by so doing you are joining the lord in celebration so if if you are here tonight and you have not given your life to jesus christ and you want heaven to be happy you want heaven to rejoice because of you i'm going to count from one to ten before i say ten make sure you are standing before the altar to come and surrender your life to jesus christ and believe me honestly there will be dancing before the angels in heaven as you come so if you want to give your life to jesus christ you want to make heaven happy begin to come now as i count one now those of you who are clapping you are clapping for jesus christ who is dancing before the angels now two so if you want to clap clap very well Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Those of you who are clapping, God will anoint your hands. Hurry up, hurry up, those of you who are the way. Nine. Keep coming, keep coming. Oh, good. Thank you. Now, those of you who are already in front and those of you who are on the way, cry to Jesus Christ. Tell him that wonder of salvation that one of your sons spoke about. I want that wonder to happen in my life tonight. Save my soul. Turn me from being a dog to his son. You are the wonder-walking God. 
save my soul and let everything become new for me forgive my sins and i will serve you for the rest of my life go ahead talk to god and the rest of us let's stretch our hands towards these our brothers and sisters and intercede for them that the one who saved our souls will save their own souls also pray for them brethren intercede for each and every one of them that the savior will come down tonight and intervene in the lives of these people and save their souls put their names in the book of life with his powerful blood wash away their sins pray for them and those of you who are still on the way you have to hurry up because i'm about to pray for salvation now and if you are still on the way make sure you get here before i finish praying and the almighty god will include you in the prayer god bless you you're welcome in jesus mighty name we have prayed my father and my god i want to say thank you very much for your word i want to thank you because we're god of wonders thank you for these people who have come forward to surrender their life to you father please receive them in jesus name Amen. perform the wonder of salvation in their lives Amen. let your blood wash away their sins Amen. save their souls lord and turn them to true children of the living god Amen. receive them into the family of god Amen. and from now on anytime they call on you please answer them by fire Amen. and please don't let them ever backslide Thank you, my Father and my God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Well, those of you who have just given your life to Jesus, let me hear you shout a big hallelujah. I rejoice with you, and I want to promise you from now on, I'll be praying for you. The counselors will give you some cards to fill. Please fill it very quickly uh, it, will, it will contain information I want your names, your address and your prayer request and I promise you from now on I'll be praying for you we will wait till you finish before we continue thank you Father
let's quickly write down our prayer points and I will want you to pray tonight with the understanding that God is going to answer your prayer suddenly number one you want to thank the Almighty God because he has performed wonders before and he's still performing wonders. So give him glory and honor. Praise him. Number two, you say, Father, please let me know you more. Paul was already an apostle when he said that I may know him. That means none of us here can claim to know all there is to know about God. So, Father, please let me know you more. Number three. Father, give me the spirit of understanding. Real divine understanding is a spirit. Give me the spirit of understanding. Number four. Father, let my set time come today. Let my set time come today. Because it is written, Thou will arise and have mercy on Zion for the time, ye the set time to favor her has come. Let my set time come today. Number five. Father, please turn all my prophecies to a decree for me tonight. Let all my prophecies be turned to a decree for me tonight. And number six, you must pray with all your heart because of the law of harvest. What you sow is what you reap. You say, Father, let this month be a month of sudden miracles for all of us. Let this month be a month of sudden miracles for all of us. And then number seven will be your own individual prayers. Now the altar is open. If you want to come, you are welcome. You begin by thanking him. Make sure you really praise him, you give him glory, you give him honor for all he had done in the past. One of the things about God is that he cannot resist praise. So praise him, worship him, give him all glory, all honor for what he had already done in the past. Go ahead, talk to him.
Thank you, Jesus. Let us begin to bring our prayers to a close. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. My Father and my God, tonight I have a special request. Everything this your children have asked for, before they get back to their seats, do for them, Lord. You are the Almighty. What could take a hundred years to do, you can do it in a minute. Right now. Answer this, your children. Perform wonders for them. Perform wonders through them. Perform wonders in them. Turn them to wonders. My Father, my God, anything or anyone that may want to stand in the way of this, my request, let your fire consume. You are the Lord of hosts. You've never lost a war. Tonight, sudden miracles. Give to your children. Any force or forces that have been hindering their success. My Father, my God, even now as I pray, let your fire consume. That your consuming fire that can purify your own at the same time can destroy their enemies. Let that consuming fire come down. Let that consuming fire come down. Let that consuming fire come down. All the glories of this, your children, that have been hidden before. This very month, bring them out. Anyone that you need to bypass, so that their prayers will be answered tonight, Father, bypass the fellow. (laughs) 
It is written, my Father and my God, that you are rich in mercy. Oh Lord. Tonight, for everyone here present, release your mercy. This very moment, release your mercy. If it is our own faults, our own sins, that has gotten us to trouble, tonight, release your mercy. My Father, my God, release your mercy. Father, nobody can query you. You can do whatever you like. You can bless whomsoever you like. You can promote whomsoever you like. Please, Lord, release your mercy. My Lord and my Savior, I beg you on my bended knees. For all of us who have been crying to you, we haven't received answer yet. Tonight, release your mercy. Whether the enemies like it or not, tonight, release your mercy. Thank you, my father. Thank you because I believe you have heard. Thank you because I believe it is done. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Let somebody shout, Hallelujah. God bless you. You can go back to your seats. God of wonders, we bless your name again. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Please receive the offerings of your children. Bless it. Sanctify it. Use it for your glory. My Father, my God, I decree that this your children will never borrow again. That they will never be hungry. They will never lack. They will always have more than sufficient. And Lord God Almighty, open mighty doors unto them. Continue to be with your children. Go with them as they go. Protect them from evil. And even before this time tomorrow, let them be shouting for joy. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Well, who got the biggest miracle tonight? Shout the biggest hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will exalt you, Lord. 
Hallelujah. 